are. I'm here today. I don't think anyone else is here, but I'm here. So it's five o'clock. And uh, welcome to Vanagon Streaming Channel here today. We're going to be talking about Vanagon stuff. I was kind of hoping some of you folks would show up so we could talk about things and you could have some questions and stuff like that. Well, let's see here. Oh, and I'm on a time delay on this, too. Okay, that's weird. Well, all right. So, welcome to Vanagon's live streaming channel. People are going to be watching this later. So, this is for you later, people that are watching this. Um, my name is Ken Wilford. I'm your host. And I'm here to talk about Vanagon's and answer your Vanagon questions. So... Let's talk about stuff that everybody wants to talk about, which is Vanagon fuel lines. Okay, Vanagons are a great vehicle. Having the engine in the back is an asset because it's a very quiet riding vehicle. And uh, that be, part of that is because the engine's in the back. But one of the bad parts of that is that if anything weird happens back there, um, you don't really know about it for a little while. So um, enter the Vanagon fuel line situation and the Vanagon fuel lines have been a problem for um, probably day one on the vans. Um, Volkswagen started out putting on fuel lines with hose clamps on them then they decided that wasn't good enough. I think the next phase was um, they put on these crimp clamps and they still had problems with these. So then they put on the last phase, they actually had a recall, and they put on, sorry about that, some spring clamps that uh, were supposed to, you know, solve this problem forever. And of course, that leaked the worst of everything. And so today, where we're at, now fast forward 30 years into the future, uh, you'll see occasionally on Facebook, a uh, Vanagon that is caught on fire and burned up. And that is a terrible disaster. That's a terrible tragedy when that happens. You don't want that to happen. I had a customer call me a few weeks ago. He was in his garage. He would store his van there in the winter. And so he was in there um, and letting the van warm up. He would do that every so often. So he saw something leaking on the floor under the van. He thought, oh, it's just antifreeze. I'm like, wow, that's... Not a good idea to not ignore that, but he was he ignored it. So it's just antifreeze, and went to go do something else. And when he came back, his engine he could see flames under come under the van. So then his next thing was I'm going to open the top to get to the flames and put them out. That was a major mistake. As soon as he opened that lid, flames shot up and tried to burn him up. So thankfully he didn't get burned up. He shut the lid again, and then he was going to try to squirt um, a fire extinguisher in the tail license plate area. He wound up not doing that. I can't remember why. Um, and so his van just got burned up. And uh, you definitely don't want that to happen. So one of the best ways to avoid that is to replace your fuel lines. All right, everybody talks about this. Um, we put together a fuel line kit probably tw almost 19 years ago uh, to replace the fuel lines on the Vanagon. The kit that we sell, we have basically been using for most of that time. I researched different clamps um, just to see which ones I thought worked the best. And uh, that's the clamps that we provide in our kit. They are worm drive clamps. They are German. They have um, a raised ridges on them for the worm drives you drive onto and they're also rounded around the edges so that um, you have something that's not going to cut into the hose and the thing I like about them is that they hold and they don't leak okay so I have had vans come back here 10 years later after we did it they're still holding good and they're not leaking now at 10 years should the lines be replaced again yes I would say yes I mean nothing lasts forever okay and so the line we use is German. I tried using some USA brand hose 
from Napa when I first started out, and in about a year it turned into a hard stick, okay, and was brittle, like broke apart. So this German hose we sell, it's uh, great. It keeps its elasticity for a really long time. And I haven't had any problems with ethanol gas with the fuel line kit either. Um, I know some people a little while ago were kind of freaking out about that on the Samba and talking about it. And most of it is people trying to act like they're smart and know things. But most of it's just speculation and saying, hey, if this is the case, then X must equal Y or something like that. But my experience is that the German fuel line we sell actually will also handle the ethanol gas and not have any ill side effects. All right, so um, so my recommendation is go to our website, www.vanagain.com. If you have not already um, did, did your fuel lines, I would encourage you to do that immediately, if not sooner, okay? And uh, we have that set for $60. There's also a fuel um, injector kit for, I think, $8.00. I would do those two at the exact same time, and that should help your van to not burn up. Okay, I mean, I hate when I see that because that's one less van on the road. That's one less van that people can use and enjoy, um, and that makes me sad. Okay, so uh, it looks like there's one person watching right now, which I think is my daughter, who is supposed to be my moderator. <laughs> uh, not sure why our uh, live stream is going over so great this week versus last week we had about seven or eight people right off the bat and uh, this week I did a lot more advertising for it uh, telling people about it uh, and we have like nobody watching so that's okay I'm not gonna be discouraged if nobody comes on here I'm going to quit in ten minutes so it's seven minutes in right now I'm not gonna sit here and talk to myself for half an hour I'm gonna quit alright so we we'll are talking about fuel lines uh, definitely do that. Take a look at those. I would say if you bought just bought your Westie or you bought your Vanagon, that would be the number one thing I would do. Um, number two would be to do a full tune-up on it. Okay, when you're buying a Westie or a Vanagon, unless you have extensive uh, notes, you know, and even then, uh, I would say start with the baseline. Okay, so you just bought your van, you want to not break down, you want to not have problems. Go, go ahead, change your oil, change your fuel filter, change your spark plugs, change your cap, rotor, plug wires, air filter, uh, all that stuff, okay, right off the bat. And just kind of start with a baseline. Then once you do that, um, the next thing I would check is your brakes, okay? Go around and look at all the brakes, visually inspect them, see if they need anything. Again, if you have records and it shows brakes were replaced like six months ago or something and there's nothing weird happening when you go to stop, then you don't have to do that. But if you just don't know, if it's like a big question mark, I don't know what it's doing, definitely check them. Um, that would be a great idea. And uh, check your brakes. Of course, we have all the brake parts here that you could ever want or need. Um, and we install a lot of this stuff here. So... We know what's good to buy and what's bad to buy. Okay, I mean, I've bought stuff that was junk and didn't hold up and didn't last. I don't sell that stuff. Okay, so my experience benefits you. Okay, sometimes maybe some of our stuff is like a little bit more expensive than somebody else. But you're not just buying the stuff. You're buying this was something that was kind of like vetted or whatever to make sure it was actually good versus something from Rock Auto or something that might be okay or might not be okay. So, brakes, definitely. Um, I would also, let's see, what else? I'm thinking belts. Okay, you want to have brand new belts. Have a spare set of belts in the van. Uh, that way, if you're out traveling, driving, you don't have to worry about if a belt breaks. You have a spare one, you can put it on. Okay, uh, if you're really in a uh, disaster zone, if you have power steering and your alternator belt breaks, they're about the exact same length. You could actually take your power steering belt off, put it on the alternator water pump thing, um, and just drive home that way. Okay, my dad did that with his van one time. It works really well. You don't really need the power steering pump to be turning. It's not going to hurt anything if it's not turning. Your steering is going to be a little bit more harder and stiffer, but besides that, it's not going to be a big deal. 
Okay. Uh, what else? So, uh, let's see. So then, if you have a Westie, okay, if you have a Westie, you want to go over all of your equipment, make sure it all works. Um, I mean, one of the big things that we run into here with Westies is the refrigerator. Okay, people hate the refrigerator. Take out the refrigerator. I'm going to put in another refrigerator that's going to work way better uh, and run off of batteries. And then you have to put batteries in. Then the refrigerator costs $900 and all this stuff. And, you know, that's all fine and dandy. Okay, but there's a lot of people out there that would be perfectly fine with the stock refrigerator if it actually worked. And so... Uh, one of the things you can do with the stock refrigerator actually has three different modes. You have 110, you have 12 volts, and you have propane. Okay, so uh, when you get your refrigerator, the number one thing you would do, I would do is plug it into 110, turn it on. It has the instructions printed on the inside of the door so that you can never forget them. If I tell you how to do it, you'll forget before you go to do it. So look on the back side of the door. All the instructions are there. Turn on 110 and let it sit overnight. And come out the next morning, it should be really cold in there. If you had a little ice cube tray, it would probably make ice. Okay, so that's the first test you want to do to your refrigerator. Now, second thing, you want to try to get it working on propane. Uh, the most of the time, how we do that is we pull that flue off the outside. It looks like a stainless steel little cover thing. We pull that off, three little Phillips heads, it comes off. Then you'll see these two holes in the side of your Westie that have, you can blow air in there with compressed air. That's what I do. I take some compressed air, blow it into those holes, both of them, uh, and you'll see a bunch of stuff shoot out. A lot of times there's spiders and stuff hanging out in there. Uh, that will blow them out, and then you can go back inside and try relighting it. Again, the steps are on. Uh, the fridge itself, when you're pumping it, you want to pump it like this. Like normally, I'll just pump it a bunch. Pop. When you push it all the way in, that is the thing that's trying to light it. Okay, so you just go like that real fast. Pop. Pop. And you hold the gas button in. And before you know it, then you look at that little light on the panel. It'll start glowing green, and it's working. Okay, so once you get a lid on propane, let it sit there and run uh, for several hours and just see how that does. Okay, usually the fridges do great. If you're going on a trip, I would start it out on 110 at night and the night before the trip. And then when you're on the trip, you can turn it on propane. Uh, or you can also put it on battery power. And once you're on the trip, it'll actually stay up on that. Okay, so uh, that's my tip for the Westy. Uh, refrigerator that's you know it's a great fridge most of the time it's enough for most people okay? unless you're living in the car or you're going on like extended trips I mean the nice part about the propane is it will last you for like a week okay if you're using the fridge and the stove I've used them both for like an entire week and never ran out of propane if you're using a battery and you're camping you can definitely run out of battery and it's not that long. A couple days, you'll be out of battery juice. But propane lasts way longer, and they can work really well if you... Now, another thing that people would like to do, and is a good idea, is put a fan inside the fridge, circulate air, like a little muffin fan. I've seen a lot of them. Um, and I think that information you would find on the Samba pretty easily, how to do that. And that's a great idea, too, because they circulate that air around in there. It will cool a lot better um, inside the West refrigerator. All right, I'm trying to think of anything else. Of course, our last week we talked about our headlight protectors. They're on the way from Europe right now. I have like a whole bunch coming here. Actually, 100 sets uh, should be here early this week, next week. Um, so if you wanted to get some of those, they will be in. Um, also, for those of you that have early Vanagons, like 80 to 83 and a half, uh, you may know about some of the problems with the shifter uh, a lot of the 80 to 83 and a half vanagons have bad shifter bushings and because they have been unavailable forever uh, and people never replace those bushings and they're bad and the thing is and we had people calling us for them and calling us for them and i would scavenge and find them in europe and different things until they ran out and the good part is i had some um, 
ones that were left that we didn't sell and we use them to make uh, new ones. So I have, if you have an 80 to 80 three and a half banner gun, go on our website, put in the word shift bushing and push the button and you will see every shift bushing that you need for your 80 to 80 three and a half banner gun. Okay. We make some of them, we get some of them from other sources. Uh, and we have all the shifter parts for that Vanagon. We also have, of course, all the shifter parts for the later model Vanagon as well. Excuse me. And so, you know, we try to keep uh, keep up with these things. You know, we're always trying to come up with some new ideas, new parts, new things that are going to help people. So that's our main goal here at Vanagon. Keep Vanagons on the road. Um, help our customers so that they... Uh, can continue to enjoy their vans. So I guess that's going to be it. I don't see anybody coming on here and watching the channel. Uh, I That makes me sad inside that that's that way. But, you know, I guess you guys out there in video land, you can watch this later and, um, you know, tonight when you get home and you're kicking it back, you're like, oh, Ken Wilford did a live stream on that. Oh, I forgot all about it. Okay, and you can watch this. And just next week, I'm going to try to come back again. I'm going to try to do this every Friday at 5 o'clock. Okay, we're going to try to do this stream again. So next week, if you didn't come this week and you missed out, come back and see us next week, and we'll try to have some more topics for you. I would do more today, but I am tired. I've been fighting with something all day, and I'm completely exhausted. But I thought, hey, I promised these folks I would be here at five for them so I'm gonna do it and you guys are not here so that's fine I hope you guys have a great weekend uh, again like subscribe and make sure you push the little button that shows like a notification so that whenever we're doing anything like this live stream it actually pops up in your notification and you know about it uh, and you know thank you for making Vanagon successful all these years and making us your Volkswagen parts choice uh, we really appreciate it. And any kind of parts that you can buy from us, I mean, that supports us. That allows us to continue to have this channel and continue to be here when people call and ask us questions and ask us for help. We can be here to help them out. All right, guys. Uh, that's it. Hope you guys have uh, a great weekend and you're getting more smiles per gallon with your van.